This time on Poll Hub, the first of the Biden era, we're looking at how Americans feel about their new president and the old one. Biden's honeymoon, Trump's legacy, and the coronavirus pandemic still raging. There are plenty of expected partisan results in these numbers, but there are also one or two legitimate surprises that are kind of hopeful. Happy 2021, happy Lunar New Year, happy Poll Hub episode 180. Let's get to it. And hi, everybody. Welcome to Poll Hub. I'm J.D. Dapper, Director of Innovation here at the Marist Poll. I'm Barbara Carvalho, Director of the Marist Poll. And I'm Lee Marinkoff, Director of the Marist College Institute for Public Opinion. We have a new president. We also have an old president. We have the coronavirus raging, as we've talked about, and lots of other things. But we have been asking Americans what they think. And this is a very, very pivotal time. And so I think it's, you know, often we talk about public opinion polls and we think they're important, but a lot of people are like, yeah, whatever. But I think this is a critical time to understand um, what Americans are thinking about these things. Um, let's start with the new president um, and what Americans are thinking about that. There's one number, I just want to read a number. I usually don't read the numbers, but one number that stood out to me that um, I really think is hopeful and it d deals with coronavirus. It's not necessarily about him. When we asked if people support or oppose his plan to have us wear face masks for the first 100 days, for the next 100 days from today or yesterday. 74% um, of Americans said they support that, including 51% of Republicans. So more than a majority of Republicans, a bare majority, support that. That to me, that's hopeful. Yeah, I think that was uh, one of the numbers that definitely jumped out. I think other numbers that also jumped out was it may actually seem from the these early numbers that Joe Biden may get a bit of a honeymoon, as uh, uh, as we've called it in the past, and we haven't seen it for a while. But 55% um, of registered voters uh, that we uh, spoke with um, actually just before the inauguration. So this was before his uh, big theme push of, uh, to unite the country. 55% said that they felt that he was going to do more to unite the country. 39% uh, uh, did not. But I thought it was interesting that even though there was a large proportion, four in 10, almost four in 10 people who thought that uh, we were still gonna be very divided and he wouldn't have an impact, the numbers themselves are not divided. <laughs> Um, and I think that that's something that we we haven't uh, seen for a while. Uh, also, but you know, majority slim, but majority meaning uh, basically meaning that I think we are seeing um, you know very strong consensus among Democrats and also uh, support for the new president among uh, independents, saying that he had done well uh, during uh, the transition, and almost half saying that they have a favorable. Um, impression of him as uh, he was about to take um, the, the oath of office. Barb, if I could just jump in on that one point, because I think it's it's important. Of course, why wouldn't I think my interruption was important? But uh, the transition number, which was 51 approval, 32 disapproval, which is a, a net of 19 positive for him, also had a 17% who said they were unsure. Now, that's interesting to me just politically because that means there's a whole bunch of folks who are on the fence. And it's not unusual when someone just takes office for some people to say, well, you know, let's wait and see, or, you know, it's just still the transition uh, when we uh, administered the survey, the end of it. Uh, but those are 17% who are open minded. They have neither endorsed what he's been offering or perhaps more significantly, haven't rejected it either. So yeah, but but Lee, isn't isn't it possible they're just legitimately unsure because up until the final seconds of his presidency, Donald Trump was still the biggest news, and that you know following what Joe Biden was doing in the warm up to his presidency uh, in the interim, well, actually took work to find out what he was doing because uh, everybody was still covering Trump. Well, I don't know because we've been in such separate camps. Um, and I think that anytime, you know, we would put, um, you know, Biden or Democrat or Trump or Republican in a question, um, you, you automatically, you know, just got complete division based, you know, based on those labels. And so I think it, I think it is interesting at this point to see that um, perhaps there is a bit of a wait and see. Um, I think people have been, um, 
you know, very fast to take sides and who knows in our, you know, our poll next week, um, we may see more of those, um, you know, people in their back in their tribes. Um, but I think this was something that was was interesting was different and at least uh, suggests that uh, the Biden administration is going to get a get a look well, and, and to look at it. To you know, to look at it slightly differently, the 51 approved to 32 disapproved, the difference of 19, as I mentioned, is a much, I mean, the 51 is very close to what he got on election day. The 32 is much below what Donald Trump got. Uh, and so the 17 is sort of out there for the getting. And uh, I think that's going to be interesting to watch. I think to your point, look, 21% of Republicans in this survey approve of the job that he did in the transition. I don't think that we got a 21% approval rating for Republicans on anything that a Democrat has done, uh, you know, in during this past election. So I, I, you're right. I mean, there, there's more to it than that. I just do think that that um, the number of unsure is reflective, yes, of, of people who ha aren't hardened, and I think that's a good sign. But I also think that. A lot of it is that that uh, this particular transition probably got less attention than some others have, simply because the outgoing president uh, is is remains very good at uh, sucking all the oxygen out of the, the media room. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we also see saw a lot of that uh, that division um, in the second term of the Obama administration. So it's actually been a really long time uh, since we've seen. Um, Americans at least uh, take pause um, in, in some of these numbers. The other thing that stood out on, on this to me, again, about coronavirus, and, and I think there is a, a broad agreement uh, among Americans that that is the biggest issue. I know Republicans have often identified the economy. I think that's related to coronavirus. And when we asked if the Biden administration was going to handle the coronavirus distribution, and look, the, the, getting the vaccine coronavirus vaccine out. The vaccine is, you know, the most important thing that we can do right now, because without the vaccine, this is going to take much longer to go away. Um, that 50% of adults and 49% of registered voters thought that, uh, that the administration would do a better job. There's some unsure and about the same, but the worst is very small. Even among Republicans, only 38% think they'll do a worse job. So I think there is, uh, again, some bipartisan understanding that this vaccine distribution, which so far has not gone as planned, uh, is going to be um, more effectively done by this administration. I just, I absolutely, I totally agree um, with, with Jay, because what struck me as a really significant number here was 42% of Republicans actually thought uh, and said that Biden would do uh, about the same job, at least as good a job on the uh, on dealing with vaccine distribution as Trump did, and they had always given Trump positive marks. So, so, so Jay made the point a moment ago that we some of this may have to do with uh, Donald Trump uh, having taken all the oxygen out of the room uh, until he was no longer president. So, before we leave this topic and go officially to the first hundred days, the beginning of the Biden administration, we did also on this poll talk about the former president Donald Trump and that his approval rating at 38%, uh, people who think he was the, when we ask a legacy question, you know, uh, among the best, among the worst, 47% saying he was among, will go down in history as one of the worst presidents, including 13% including of Republicans, I might add, which I thought- No, in addition, in, oh, oh, in, in, oh, in yeah, terms yeah. of Republicans who said that, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, there's an additional group who think he'll be, subpar, which makes the one of the worst and the subpar below average and up to 60%. Um, is there anything anybody wants to say uh, about the approval rating or disapproval of Donald Trump before we give him over, at least in the short run, run to the dustbin of history? Well, compared to the other national polls, our 38% actually was on the high side. Um, I think the majority of the final national polls, um, including Pew Research, who had him at 29%, and Gallup, who had him at 34%, uh, all showed that he had um, actually was probably at his lowest point um, upon leaving um, 
office. And that does it for President Donald Trump, never to be mentioned again on the podcast. I don't think I'm, I don't think so. <laughs> In any case, uh, it was certainly um, Wednesday was uh, Biden's day. And in this poll incident, we did ask uh, whether people should, whether, whether the inauguration should be held outside or not. And 63% thought it uh, should be. Uh, 28% were more concerned about the risk factor. Um, I think right now, uh, there's no doubt that for the most unusual of circumstances, given the safety concerns and the safety concerns of, of a possible uh, domestic terrorism, and the coronavirus, uh, that all things considered, it was a very optically pleasing event um, and certainly went off without a hitch uh, given all the uh, prior concerns. And then we of course look at the first 100 days and Barb, you, you alluded to the potential for a honeymoon period here, maybe because three quarters of the country thinks we're headed in the wrong direction. And when President Biden says we need to find common ground uh, given the coronavirus, these are things he can now take forward uh, and maybe buy a little time with that. Um, but uh, what, what are some of the things that he's proposing uh, which he hopes to find common ground? I mean, these executive orders are fast and furious right now, and most of them are things I think that are shared by most Americans. Uh, in yeah, of I think it's really, I think it's really interesting because I, I think the, um, the way it's for being portrayed as, you know, as uh, a number of executive orders um, that Trump did in his first days in office, the way it's being portrayed um, is that he's undoing um, all, you know, he's, he, his motive is simply to undo um, what what Trump has done. But I think if you look at a number of the uh, top issues which he has said that he is going to undertake, uh, not, in, not only in these first few days of his administration, but in the next hundred days, um, and no small task here. These are, many of them are, are issues where you find that very strong consensus um, among Americans. Certainly vaccine distribution, which you alluded to, um, uh, Jay, when we asked people um, specifically about coronavirus and all the different aspects of, of that issue, um, vaccine distribution was, you know, top of mind, um, you know, for almost a, a majority of Americans, followed by um, relief to small businesses and then also the, um, the, uh, the, the additional payments uh, to people um, um, who um, just to help boost the economy and then also uh, unemployment um, extensions. Um, the other, some of the other things, uh, certainly um, the uh, in addition to you know the, the stimulus uh, checks, the economic um, things that he's considering for um, boosting um, the economy through also dealing with the coronavirus, um, people want the schools reopened. We have a majority of people who, although there's a lot of concern, they want to have a plan moving forward uh, for. Uh, um, opening schools, 57% of Americans felt that uh, schools had not gotten enough federal support and direction in order to be able to do, to deal with the, with the, with the virus. Um, other issues he's taken upon himself, the pathway to citizenship uh, for 11 million undocumented uh, people in the US has strong support, nearly two thirds of Americans support moving forward uh, with that initiative. Uh, there's just a long list. D Jay, you mentioned also the seven in 10 who believe that the mandating of masks, you know, for the next 100 days was something um, so, so that is very positive. So although there are these are a number of issues um, that um, can become debatable, uh, can be contentious, particularly when we get to um, his plan in, in the Senate and in Congress. Um, but right now he's, he's approaching um, his priorities um, and they match very well with what Americans are, are looking for. So I have a Jay Dapper question. Jay, I just want to ask, ask a question to you and then you can uh, talk about the numbers that jumped out at you. Uh, so given this 
not era of good feelings, but certainly you know things are so bad people are willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, and he's moving in directions that are popular. Honeymoon or no honeymoon? Yeah, I think there's a honeymoon, but actually that it leads to exactly what I was the two numbers I'm going to pull out, and because I think it frames these hundred days, and then it's going to actually I'm going to throw a question to you, which is based on this framing, what do you think this hundred days is going to be like? Uh, the two numbers that, that stand out to me as a framing of the 100 days is the right direction, wrong direction. Uh, and you alluded to it, 20% uh, of Americans think the country is headed in the right direction, 75% in the wrong direction. It is the lowest number on right direction that we have ever had. We've been asking the question since January of 2001. It has never been lower. That is one number. The other number is, and you alluded to this as well, do you believe the election was legitimate or not legitimate? And 31%, I'll take the negative here, 31%, one in three Americans still does not believe the election was legitimate. That includes 70% of Republicans. So if 70% of Republicans don't believe the election was legitimate, and the Senate is 50-50, and uh, Republicans in the Senate and certainly in the Congress are acutely tuned in to what their base of voters thinks about the election, yet nobody in the country, only one in five, thinks the country is going in the right direction, what does that mean for his chances to do things in 100 days and a honeymoon? And that was the question you were going to throw to me. Funny, I I, I, was I did throw it to you. Yeah, that's thrown to you. Yeah, I thought it's yeah, funny because I was get just- Get your catcher's mitt out. That was a big one. Yeah, I was just playing on second. going to lunch though. So no, I will uh, I will try to- <laughs> Well, here, here's how I'll answer that. Um, I mean, I think Mitch McConnell's really very important in all this. Uh, and Joe Biden and Mitch McConnell were actually in the Senate together for 24 years. Um, Joe Biden, oddly enough, uh, at a time of great danger for the nation, is in many ways a graduate of the Senate club. Uh, doesn't mean everybody there was with him when he was there. Uh, and certainly there's a whole group of folks who have you know, have been talking uh, very vociferously about um, you know, this uh, illegitimate election and all those kinds of concerns that you raise. Um, but, you know, Joe Biden knows the Senate. He knows his way around it. Uh, and I think Mitch McConnell is going to be very interesting to watch in terms of how their relationship unfolds. Obviously, Majority Leader Schumer is going to be very much important. Uh, but calling the Democrats together may be less significant than finding a group of Republicans uh, who can support the Biden program. But I will say one thing that's, you know, that's really coming up real soon in this, and it could threatened to break, break things apart. And you know what I'm going to be talking about, and that is the impeachment trial. I mean, are we, you know, what is going to happen to the Senate while they're moving ahead with this first 100-day agenda to the impeachment of Donald Trump and the, and, and conviction or, tri or the actor of the trial of him? Uh, and I think that is really a big, huge question mark in all this. No question that that's a... Uh... That's really can, can change the focus of, of uh, all of this and certainly uh, Biden's plan. And I think he certainly recognizes the, um, the fine line that he needs to, to walk between his base, uh, you know, wanting not to let go of um, and to, to want to have consequences, uh, you know, for what has happened. Um, but I think also, um, that there's a there's a couple there's a couple of things uh, here, and one is that um, certainly if the Republicans can become united, um, and impeachment is certainly one of those issues that can do that. Um, I think they are missing um, Trump's megaphone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I don't think Ted Cruz. I don't think Josh Hawley. I don't think Rand Paul. Um, you know, have have the same impact um, that Donald Trump has um, on on Republicans um, as a whole. It'll be interesting. I mean, they certainly uh, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul were hoping to uh, to get the nomination. You know, uh, in in 2016, and con, you know, contended with uh, with Trump at that point. But I think that um, you certainly. Um, are missing a unifying voice right now. Certainly one is likely to emerge, um, but we, we still um, need to, to wait and, and see about that. And then just, just the other thing, um, I, I think also uh, that there's going to be 
um, you know, there's going to need to be some reckoning in the Republican Party as to which direction uh, they will be going. And I think that that is something uh, beyond the relationships that Biden has with Mitch McConnell. I think that that's a strategic assessment that Republicans will be making in the Senate um, and, uh, and what kind of party they want to come out of this post-Trump era. And I'm going to toss it to Jay to you know bring us on home on this, uh, but I think ultimately past the hundred days, and I'm going to if I could find out some poll numbers now, two years from now, uh, to measure the marker on the success or failure of the Biden administration and and what he's done is whether the institutions questions the faith and confidence in our institutions that we've asked, you know the you know sort of the 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 markers of democracy. Um, you know, feelings about the press, feelings about the media, feelings about pollsters, feelings about, you know, have some confidence in the workings of government be restored uh, and kind of like a ma macro level, the honesty in government, the things, you know, some of which that Joe Biden has been talking about beyond the issues to achieve that uh, underlying faith or restoring that faith in, in the democracy is something that I think will be a uh, in a sense, another marker of his success going forward. That's not going to happen in the first hundred days, but he's uh, clearly. Well, I think I think it actually has happened a little because I know we've been talking about that issue of whether Joe Biden won legitimately, won the election legitimately. But actually, in in 2016, the number who thought that Trump had won fairly was uh, was uh, actually. Um, a lower number. So perhaps we are moving in that direction later. Well, I mean, the good news is from a completely pessimistic standpoint is could it really get any worse when when the oh, people stop. when the people who have faith <laughs> in institutions is so low other than business and the military that I mean that's about it. Everybody else is down in the in the low low double digits. So, I don't know. We'll see. And in the right direction, wrong direction number. I mean, like you say you're so far down, you got nowhere to go but up. Yeah, 20% doubt that it can get worse than that. Let's hope not. Uh, but hey, we'll keep asking that question and uh, we will report back to you. That for now, though, is going to do it for this edition of Poll Hub. Poll Hub is a production of the Marist Poll, Marist College in Poe, Kipsey, New York. Mary Griffith is our executive producer. Casey Schaff is our production supervisor. Amelia Morrell, Leo Ruiz, our production assistants, and Marcello Batman puts this mess together and makes it sound good. He's our editor. Thank you, as always. And we take this time to talk about the Roper Center who, at Cornell University, have the archives of all the pollsters who have good polls to, to send their way. So if you're looking for any information uh, about some of the things we talk about uh, beyond what we talk about, you can always ask questions to us, but you can also check the Roper archives. Lots of good stuff there. Yeah, and that'd be a good idea, Lee. So, uh, yeah, if you do have questions or comments, certainly reach out to us on social media. We're at Maris Poll pretty much everywhere you can think of on social media. But, you know, if you have a question that you think you'd like to be uh, asking the uh, American uh, people um, as a, or something that uh, you need to uh, uh, clarify uh, on the, uh, at, the, at the dinner table, um, you know, let us know. We're always uh, we're always looking for ideas of uh, issues and topics to poll. And finally, if you like what you hear on Poll Hub, please consider leaving a review on your podcasting app of choice. We love positive reviews; it helps others find us. Uh, and while you're at it, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Stay safe. We'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.